A year ago, I completed the Credo for Change cohort, which culminated in a pitch day to investors. And now here I am, a year later, with a network and a roster of VCs. I learned a lot through this process, and the purpose of this podcast episode is to share these learnings with you transparently in real time. Welcome to the Nopalera podcast, a place where I share the journey of building my company from the ground up, as well as the stories of others in our community. I am your host, Sandra Velasquez, founder of Nopalera, a culture forward brand that celebrates and elevates culture. Aside from making great products, we are cultural storytellers with a mission to inspire our community to stand in their worth. In this podcast, you will hear a mix of solo and guest episodes around the entrepreneurial realities of building a company. I launched Nopalera from my Brooklyn apartment with no outside funding while working three jobs, raising my child in the middle of the pandemic at the age of 44. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope it inspires you to live boldly. Hello, hello, friends. It has been a while since our last episode, and today's topic is also the reason why. It has been a very momentous year, a lot of changes, a lot of growth, very quickly, a lot of learnings. So two months ago, I closed our oversubscribed 2.7 million seed round. It was one of the hardest things I've done since launching Nopalera. As you know, I completely bootstrapped this brand from inception. I used my American Express card to buy ingredients and components. I asked my designer for a payment plan. I made the products myself for the first year in my Brooklyn apartment and studio. And I worked three jobs while I built my brand for a year in the quiet. When I launched Nopaleta in November 2020, I was working as a territory manager for Van Leeuwen Ice Cream. I was literally in the freezer at Wegmans, climbing over pallets, merchandising. I was also working as a sales rep for High Bar, and I was teaching a CPG class at night. One job was to pay the rent, another to pay off debt, and the other to fund my brand. And let's not forget, there was a pandemic. When I started, I had no network in the beauty industry. I have never worked in beauty. Many of my competitors have been working in beauty for decades, so they already have connections and contacts. They know who to call. I didn't even know how to find a co-packer, and I certainly didn't know how to find any venture capitalists. A year ago, I completed the Credo for Change cohort, which culminated in a pitch day to investors. And now here I am, a year later, with a network and a roster of VCs. I learned a lot through this process, and the purpose of this podcast episode is to share these learnings with you transparently in real time. So today, I want to share the six things I learned from this fundraising process. Number one, when you are an early stage company, people are investing in you. You will need to define clearly why you are the badass CEO that can build and lead a team to the finish line. You need to exude confidence. If you are feeling unworthy, small, and insecure, desperate, you will repel money. So I am fortunate to have over 15 years of experience under my belt, being a band leader. I have played for thousands on stage, as well as to four people, and had to bring the same full energy every time regardless. I have been rejected by hundreds of clubs and talent buyers, but I kept going. You will never build your confidence muscle if you quit. And side note, this does not mean that you will not get nervous or feel like you're going to throw up before you pitch or go on stage. I still get nervous. But number two, rich people know other rich people. So you have to ask for introductions. A year ago, I knew exactly zero venture capitalists or people with money. If you are asking yourself, how do I even meet VCs? I feel you, that was me, and now I have a list. How? Because I met one, and then they introduced me to two, etc. I created a Twitter account to start following VCs. Many of them are on Twitter. They're also on LinkedIn. Follow them, see what they're talking about, see who they're talking to. The platform will recommend others to follow once you follow one. So follow them, and let me say this another way. Don't sit around waiting for someone to find you. They will not. You have to make yourself visible. Put yourself in new rooms, even if it costs money. Number three, creating a stunning deck with headlines at the top of each one and speak from a place of authority. Practice in front of your friends. Practice in front of the mirror. Record yourself. Watch it back. People do not read. (laughs) Okay, all of us, including investors, we're still like cavemen. So tell me one thing and show me a picture. If you cannot get your point across quickly, then you need to work on your story. What does every magazine and newspaper have in common? A headline and a picture. 
So all pitch decks need to show why, what is the problem? Why are you the solution? What is the market size opportunity? What is the traction if you have any? What is your roadmap for like the next two to three years? Tell me about your team or the team you're going to build. Why you? Why are you the bad SEO that has the experience to lead this team and this vision? And then the ask, what are you asking for and how are you going to use it? And honestly, even if you aren't raising, you need clarity on all of these things. I can't say this enough. Confidence plus clarity equals cash, okay? Also, making these pitch decks will help you really gain clarity on your actual vision and roadmap. You need to know this. And it has to be big because investors, again, are investing in big ideas, people with big ideas, not people that are just trying to get by or play small. Number four, get all of your documents and intellectual property together. Before people give you large sums of money, they need confirmation that your business is set up correctly. So documents of a corporation, are you a C corp? Are you an S corp? The intellectual property diligence is what slowed down my process and added stress for me. So your trademarks, have you trademarked your name? Is it owned by you personally or is it owned by your company? Do you own your formulas? Do you have contracts in place with retailers and co-packers? Listen, no one starts a beauty brand so they can deal with paperwork, I assure you. But if you don't set it up properly and document everything in the beginning, it will come back to bite you or worse, slow you down. Part of fundraising requires you create a data room. This is nothing more than a Google folder with folders inside. So think of it like a master folder that has, let's say, 10 folders. One of them is brand, then there's sales, then there's financials, then there's intellectual property, there's roadmap, there's you know traction, there's press. So all of these things are filed so that people can go and find things quickly for anything that they want to understand about your business. Number five, money, and this is really the important one, you guys. Money begets money. I already knew this intellectually, but I really experienced it firsthand going through this process. When I first started my fundraise, many investors told me things like, oh, well, we don't want to be the first 500K. Essentially, nobody wants to be first on the dance floor. So my shoulders were tense when after a few months of pitching, I still did not have a yes. Did I doubt myself? Yes. Did I quit? No. So say this mantra to yourself every day. There is a lot of money in the world. And this is because it's true, okay? And if it feels far away, I understand. I felt that way too. But you have to become the money, as Arlen Hamilton says. You cannot show up to these pitch meetings desperate, with desperate energy, with nervous energy. You have to show up confident, like as if the money is already yours, as if your vision is already accomplished. That is the type of energy you need to bring. If you don't have money, you have to become the money, and that is purely energetic. And so what does working on your mindset actually mean? It actually means rewiring your brain to believe a new story about your relationship to money and your own self-worth. How do you do this? You literally talk to yourself and write a new story. So not once, not twice, but every single day. I literally lied in my bed every morning and pictured the money already in my bank account. I listened to guided meditations every day, and it asked me to think about three things that I wanted to be grateful that they were already mine. Now, this might sound woo-woo to you, but you literally have to feel like it's already yours. And of course, you have to take actions, right? So we're not just visualizing and then going about you know, our old actions. We're taking new actions. We're reaching out. All of these things that I've listed above, get them together. Do you have your vision written out? Everything, all of that is clear, right? So you have to take actions. You know, I'm 46 years old. The amount of times that I have said the phrase I'm broke in my life is actually too many to count. So please stop saying the stuff that keeps you stuck. Do not participate in your own stuckness. Take new actions to get new results. The most important story is the one that you tell yourself. So trust me when I tell you that whatever you put in your head, you will find proof that it is true, especially the negative things. All right. Back to my point here. Once I had a lead investor commit, all of a sudden, everyone wanted to give me money. So this is what I mean by money begets money. It was to the point where I actually had to turn people down at the end because they were coming in too late. I was closing the round. I wanted to close it. I need to move on and start building the team. So I had to actually tell people no at the end. But once you have money, people want to give you more money. <laughs> So you just need that first yes. You're going to get a lot of no's, but you need that first yes. You need that first commitment because then other people, investors, 
are just normal people with FOMO and they, they wanna go, hey, what's happening over there? What am I missing out on? It was wild. Literally weeks before I was desperate for money and now I was turning it down. So this is how I set out to raise 2 million, but ended up with 2.7. Money begets money. And number six, this is something that one of my lawyers told me. Money is cheap, it runs out, then what? So what she meant was, is that when you are going to take on outside investors, they need to be bringing something else to the table besides their checkbook. Because reminder, there's plenty of money in the world, not all of it is good. So ask for resources. What do you want out of your investors aside from the check? You know, network, what expertise, what connections, relationships do they have that they can bring to the table to help you scale, to put that money to good use? So when people ask me why I didn't raise through crowdfunding, the answer is network. I want investors who have a network and resources to help us grow, not just the money. So I hope that this is helpful to you. Since we raised the money, we have been able to build a team. I've been able to hire a director of operations, a VP of sales. We're still a small team of five people, but now we have a great team, we have a great brand, and now we have capital to really scale and help us grow and weather this next year because 2023 we know is going to be pretty brutal economically. So really grateful that I went through this process and I, I really took the chances and put myself out there and learned. That's the only way it's gonna happen. So please go out and learn as much as you can, show up with confidence, get all of your information together as if you're ready to make it happen. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I hope that everyone has a beautiful holiday and that we are all preparing for 2023. Visit nopalera.co to pick up your favorite self-care items for yourself and your friends and family. Join our mailing list to be the first to hear about new products and exclusive promotions and follow us on IG at nopalera.co. And if you are an entrepreneur looking for more real talk and resources, you can join my entrepreneurial newsletter from my personal website, sandraliliavelasquez.com and be the first to know when I host workshops and masterclasses. Everything is linked below in the show notes. Stay resilient.